Today I want to talk about the SIP airtight drinking valve. This is a port that goes in your mask that lets you take a drink without having to take your mask off. And this is something that could be useful for long plane flights when you don't want to have to unmask, but you also don't want to get dehydrated. This has already been tested by Amanda Hu and Barry Hunt on Twitter to see whether it's airtight when there's no straw in it, and they are very happy with the results. So I want to go over some other details, like how much worse would it be if you used a straw, and uh, can you accidentally inhale water if you uh, breathe in while you have the straw through the mask. We'll take a look at a few of those, but first let's look at what comes in the package and how to install it. So. You can see they have it shown on a uh, surgical mask. If you are wearing a surgical mask, uh, don't even bother wearing this or using this because your surgical mask leaks 50%. So a straw is not going to make that much difference. But um, you probably should upgrade to a respirator grade mask and then you might want this because then you'll be concerned about leaks because your mask fits so well, hopefully, that a leak would be a significant difference. So in the package we have uh, straws that these are the same thickness as the kind of straws that come with a juice box and uh, there's 10 of them i've already taken one out and we'll pull out the valve here and i got everything except the valve let's try that again come on valve all right we're almost there okay so here's the valve and we're going to go ahead and bring it up and you can kind of see there's a little x there and that's where the straw goes through but when the straw is in there, you can see that there are um, uh, little gaps. So you're not going to want to breathe too much while you have this, but those gaps are much smaller than the gaps would be uh, you know, in your mask if you put a straw under your mask. So pretty good seal, and you take it out, and it seals right back up. Okay, so I've got the particle counting machine ready, and I have a mask already attached to it. Uh, before we start testing the valve, we want to make sure that the mask fits me well before we make assumptions about what the valve might be doing. The uh, fit testing machine samples air inside the mask and it uses this other tube to sample air outside the mask and compares the two to see how much cleaner the air is inside the mask. Okay, I've been breathing through the mask for a little while. That should get the uh, air out of the mask that was unfiltered. And we're ready to do our sample test and see what this mask can do all on its own. So um, that's a 382, and that means it's 382 times cleaner inside the mask than outside the mask. Uh, to pass a fit test for uh, work purposes, you need to have a fit factor of 100. And uh, so this passed with flying colors with a test that's even tougher than the one used for N95s normally. One of the things we have to do before we put the SIP mask valve in is find out where your mouth is so that uh, we can put the straw in the right place. All right, so they say to use a pen. Uh, I'm actually able to see where this goes on the M, on the 3M. So we'll install it right there, and uh, hopefully my probe won't get in the way. Now, they give us a little guide on how to cut this and to use this one centimeter marker to uh, make sure that it's long enough. Let's see. Okay, that looks a little bit off. It's not quite a 45 degree angle. And we'll see, we'll see if it fits. All right, so there's that. Let's take a look from the back side. Looks like the coverage is pretty even. It's not too much bigger than the, uh, looks like it could be it's a little narrow this way. So it's not quite, the dimensions aren't quite right. Um, I'm gonna leave it that way because uh, that's a mistake that other people are probably going to make as well. All right, I still have to put the retaining ring on. Okay, I, I don't think that's perfectly installed, but again, I am going to stick with it because that's a real-world example. And first, uh, in the test run, we're going to go ahead and test it with the mask without a straw in it and see if it made any difference. Uh, there might be some variability because that's just natural, so uh, unless the score is really different, um, I'm going to say it, it doesn't make a difference, so we'll see. Okay, we should have purged most of the unfiltered air out by now, and uh, let's go ahead and run this fit test for the first time with the valve. All 
Okay, uh, 332. And um, that is uh, slightly lower, but it's within the range of variability, I expect, so I can't attribute that to the valve. Um, it's still a really high score. It's still very good. And uh, now let's try it with sipping something. I have uh, a uh, beverage here I'm going to drink, and I'm going to use one of their supplied straws because uh, they think those are the right size. And I'm going to let the test start, and uh, it's a while before the sample air gets into it, so I'm going to wait a few seconds until the test is in progress before I, I try uh, doing this. And uh, bear with me, because I've never tried this before. Okay, and here we go. So right now it's sampling air from outside to compare, and in, in just a second we'll hear a valve flip when it's uh, done doing that. That's the valve. Now it's purging uh, mask air through this uh, hose to get the actual uh, air from the mask. And that takes about 11 seconds, so now it's time to um, try this. All right. All right, so that was just one cycle. I managed to finish this much water. I did take a couple of breaths um, while I was drinking, uh, including when I got to the bottom of this uh, bottle. So I don't know if that's going to affect the fit score or not. Um, we're going to find that out. And because it's an average over time. Okay, so that was um, 34. So uh, the cycle of putting the straw in and drinking and uh, maybe breathing in possibly some of the air. <laughs> um, it did reduce it a little bit, but it's still got a protection factor of 34. That's 34 times cleaner. And um, that's actually, frankly, a score that's better than most people are getting with their KF94 masks. And uh, so that's less than 5% leakage. I don't know it off the top of my head. So that's still a really good score, even, even though it's one-tenth of what it was uh, without the uh, straw in the sip hole. All right, we're going to do another test, and uh, I'm going to put, I've uh, taken this straw here, and I've sealed the end with beeswax, and we're going to see just how much of a leak I get by just having the straw in the uh, port, and see if that's significant. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and start the fit test. Okay, uh, 105, so it, uh, it actually passed the fit test. Uh, even with this in, but it was still one-third normal. But I'm going to do this again because I, I think I felt like I might have moved the mask a little bit when I put this in. <sighs> All right, I'm going to try this again. Okay, I'm going to go again. Okay, 230. All right, so that was much better. That could have just been the mask fit from my fussing with the straw and the mask, and that's another thing that could happen to you. Uh, even so, 230 is still an outstanding score. It did reduce the um, fit factor a little bit, um, but I still got good filtration and uh, fit. Now I want to try something else, which is, so if we're, you know people are worried about leaks with this sip mask, what would it be like um, if I tried to use a drinking straw? Uh, so I'm going to use uh, a bendy straw to try and, and uh, have to lift up the mask as little as possible, and we're going to. Um, Drink the same volume of liquid as I did before, and uh, we'll do it with this straw here. So we'll see if this is uh, significantly worse than using the sip mask. All right, we're going to give it a start and let it do the ambient sample first before I lift up the mask to do the sample. Um, just wait till we hear that valve. Okay, ambient 1530. All right.
Okay, I did that without breathing while drinking. Uh, we'll see if that made a difference and see what kind of fit factor we get lifting that up. Now, it is going to average it out, so we're going to get like a 40-second average. Uh, so it's going to be uh, balanced against having the mask back on. We don't get an instantaneous fit factor reading uh, for just the, the leaky portion. Okay, and... I just heard the valve. We're doing the ambient sample now. All right, let's see. What do we got for the ambient? 1470. So we got a fit factor of 4.6. Um, the uh, straw definitely let in more air from outside. Um, however, 4.6 uh, on average, uh, it, it's still better than a surgical mask, which usually gets more like... Um, you know, 2.5 rating. Um, so uh, what's better, wearing a surgical mask or taking this off to take a drink? This is still better uh, than a surgical mask. So now that we've covered that, um, let's cover, couple, uh, do a couple other issues. Uh, some people wonder, you know, can you inhale uh, water when you breathe in? And so to test that out, I want to uh, do a quick little test here. So when the mask seals well, um, there is enough pressure drop to bring the uh, water up a little bit. If you're drinking horizontally, and uh, the juice is here, if you've got a good fitting mask and a tight seal, uh, especially if your mask is hard to breathe through, yeah, you could accidentally uh, get some water uh, or juice coming through the straw into your mask when you inhale, even if it's not in your mouth. Um, so the key to that is going to be uh, have a breathable mask. Don't breathe in while drinking, and also um, make sure you've got some height on your straw. The, the higher it is, the less likely you are to be able to uh, breathe in liquids uh, just from the air pressure inside the mask. So with that, I think... Um, I would say the SIP mask, as others have concluded, is, is real. It functions. Um, they do provide uh, little caps. And uh, I think I would pre probably be inclined to wear them. I, do, I see one other possible problem with this mask is it looks like it's got a valve. And if they ever go back to mask mandates, people are going to say, look, it's a valve. You can't wear that. Um, we'll see. Well, we'll probably put this on here. And it's hard to do without taking the mask off. All right, so there's the SIP valve cover. They give you two because they're obviously very easy to lose. Now, before we go away, I do want to do one more test. I'm going to do some insertions. And I want to do a little test by putting this straw in, um, say, 50 times. And we'll test it. And then I'm going to put in um, one of these bigger straws in 50 times. All right, I have a counter here. Uh, we'll zero that out. And a mask. Okay, one. Okay, well, let's see. Can we see any difference here? Still looks fairly close, but it looks a little bit worn. Um, still looks like it'll seal pretty well. All right, we're going to give it a test. Okay. 209. Um, it's actually uh, lower than I usually get with this mask. All right, so um, that could just be mask variability. I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's try it with the uh, cap on and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so we've got the cap on. We're going to try the test again. Uh, let's see. Okay, 387 with the cap on. And... Um, so after the torture test, the score went down. Let's see what happens when I take the cap off and see if the uh, leak we're getting was from the um, valve. So now the, the leak we got, possible leak, was still way above the normal passing fit test score. So it was still a good score for a, a, an N95. But I want to see if there is a difference between the, the cap and the valve. 433. So uh, previously that was variability. Um, 
these, uh, these machines also do have uh, a margin of error of like uh, 10%. So you have to be careful about putting too many um, assumptions into uh, small changes. All right, so I'm gonna say that this valve is pretty effective, but I wanna torture test it one more time. But this time we're gonna put a, a hundred um, strokes with this larger straw, not the one that it comes with. And we'll see if that makes a difference. Okay, so that's 100, and um, I think if we look at it, you can see that there is actually some damage uh, on the seal from what I did. Um, using that big straw seems to have, uh, so yeah, it's caused a tear. But let's see if it functions uh, with the tear and still seals well. Now granted, I, I was deliberately using a straw that was uh, not the one they supplied because I want to know how it's gonna work with the way people actually use stuff. So we had uh, 100 insertions of their green straw and then 100 insertions of the yellow straw. And I uh, was not particularly careful. And then I'm not sure everyone necessarily will be either, which is the reason why I wanted to test it that way. Okay, and we'll test it with the valve first and then we'll put the cap over and see if there's a difference. All right, 213, still a very good, um, very good score for an N95. Uh, the uh, damaged valve is still holding, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this cap on. We'll see if it makes a difference. 331, um, that's significantly better, but um, it could still just be normal variability. All right, I'm going to test it again. Um, but I might have moved the mask a little bit trying to get that off, so I'm not sure. 238, so about the same score as before. Let's put this cap on and see what happens. Four hundred with the cap. Uh, three ninety nine overall. I'm gonna take the cap off and test again. 320. Okay, so it's up to normal rate. So I'm going to just say that that may just be variability uh, when we got lower scores of the valve. Um, either way, I, I think there's two takeaways from this, which is um, one, the 3M Mora is an excellent, excellent mask. Gives great fit factor on uh, me and a lot of other people. And the other is that um, the uh, SIP airtight seal actually works. Uh, even after it's been tortured a little bit, but I would say you should be careful and you should inspect this carefully um, Even to the point of maybe backlighting it and using a magnifying glass to be sure because you don't want extra leaks if You don't have to and I, I think these are a good idea um, Although not necessarily absolutely necessary So I was skeptical and uh, now I think I, I would actually consider putting one of these on a mask for a long trip uh, and using the small size straw they use um, however, I, I would be a little careful when you're using a juice box or a Capri Sun because you can accidentally squeeze these or, you know, if you've got the straw horizontal, it doesn't take that much inhalation pressure through the mass, just breathing in to uh, suck something up to this, this height through that. Um, but all that taken into account, um, yeah, I think it's definitely something that I would consider. Unfortunately because I've tested this to destruction or partial destruction, I can't use this one and I didn't buy a backup. So uh, I'll have to consider whether or not I'm going to buy one of these. If I do have to take a trip, I would definitely consider doing so.